As I mentioned at the beginning, with all the market volatility and chaos around the COVID outbreak, people are wondering how this volatility will affect them. Given the sheer volume of unfolding news and things coming out about the virus, it's certainly understandable if you have concerns. We too have concerns. Larry and myself and the entire Cogent team all owns portfolios that are somewhat similar to yours in so many ways, except for the amount of risk that we take for our particular situations. But we find ourselves asking, as many investors do, what's gonna happen next? Where is this gonna go? How is the economy gonna react? And how is my family gonna survive and thrive through this? It's very understandable to have these concerns, but you should know that there is an awful lot of history out there, what markets have done, through other crises and how they have come out of it. I am a pure believer in looking at the data from behind and seeing how it applies to us moving forward. And Larry's gonna help us interpret that today. So let's look at what's happened so far. The two black marks there are both the high of the year and the low of the year. So this is a dollar invested at the beginning of the year. And what happened? It went up to a high of 102. And now it's down to a little over 71. And this is just the equity markets. And they have experienced increased volatility, as you can see here. Now, that's in stark contrast to the steady growth that we often expect and actually have had much of the last 11 years since the last crisis. So this plots how a dollar has reacted, invested in the world stock markets over the last year. Now let's take a look at other crises. So we're already in this one, right? Markets have reacted. Prices have reflected the new situation, the new amount of data that we have within the marketplace. It is amazing being a former trader, it is amazing how quickly markets react. But what this is, is kind of looking out the rear view mirror and looking at what has happened in other crises prior to this. So with our years of experience, we know that a disciplined investor looks beyond the concerns of today. That's not easy to do, but it's what you should be doing. And you should look out over the long-term growth potential of markets. So this slide shows the performance of a balanced investment strategy following other previous historic crises. And these are just a few of them. Although a global investment strategy would have suffered losses just like the strategies did through this one, it's important to know that they recovered and they actually had returns over the period afterwards. In here, you can look at the bottom, it delineates across here, what is it, seven different crises. It shows the one year, the three year, and the five year annualized returns of what markets did afterwards. So once markets react and reprice, they then recover and they go up. Negative events such as these may tempt investors to jump ship, to flee financial markets. But diversification and a long-term perspective can help investors like you, myself, and Larry apply the discipline to ride out the storm. So let's look at a history of market up and downs. This is the S&P 500, the largest corporations in America that experienced a 20% downturn. So we have exceeded that now. So we are now in bear market territory. Bear market is when from the high to where the market is now has breached 20%. This chart shows that, there, that um, we can see from the chart that in good times, markets have been disproportionately longer than bad times. So we can expect positive returns every day. Believe it or not, you can expect that right now, even in the middle of the crisis. But while there is no consistent way to protect, uh, predict when performance will be positive or negative, investors staying the course, sitting in their seats, staying invested, have been rewarded over a long period of time. So let's talk about briefly what you and I and others are going through emotionally. Some of us suffer from this more so than others. The, I, the idea to investing is to buy low, hold on to it, and sell when it's higher. Yet, following an emotional investment cycle sparked by reactive decisions may bring the opposite effect. 
So as you go through this cycle, and we all know this can be both in markets, it can be in your personal situation. There are so many things that can affect how as an investor, you look at this cycle. But you'll see that it can offer the opposite. So optimism happens, people invest, it starts to get elated, they pile in far further, oh, it's doubled, it's tripled, it must still be going up. And then unfortunately, sometimes markets turn over right as people have the highest level of exuberance, which is maybe why it was high. And then it starts to turn. And then investors turn and they start to get nervous. Did I make a mistake? They start to have regret. Go through all of the behavioral biases that many of us have succumbed to in the past. And then you get down into the fear range. I'm not, I'm not saying that's us now that we're in the fear range, but I'll bet you there are some people out there that are getting close. The severity and the Swiss swiftness of the volatility is intimidating. But when they get down, they might actually bail at the bottom somewhere near the bottom and they might just throw their whole investment plan away. They've locked in their losses and they're going to experience the stress of when eventually we come out of this, which we will, they will have the stress of watching it go back up and then having to make the decision when is it safe to get back in. And as my friend Larry Swedro, who's about to speak to us, says, it's not like going to the beach and swimming. They don't put up a green flag and say, yeah, everything's safe. The water's good. Come on in. There's almost always a yellow flag out there. There's almost never a day that says there are no stresses or things that could affect your investments. But staying disciplined in rising or falling markets can really pose a challenge, but it can increase your long-term success. And there is so much data to back this up. One more slide here. This chart reports the performance of markets subsequent to a 10% decline, which we have exceeded. Again, the S&P 500 through the end of last year. But you can see that once it exceeds the 10%, then going forward, these are returns that you can expect on average looking backwards, not you can expect necessarily, but that we can look back and we can say if we aggregate all of the 10% declines, markets do stabilize and do recover over time. There is hope that you can get this. And remember, this goes back to 1926, which was prior to the very long period of depression by which we had multiple up and down times. So let's talk, I mentioned a minute ago about staying in your seat. What if you don't? What happens if you do decide you can't take it anymore, you have too much risk? Maybe you're just really scared because you've had neighbors, friends, coworkers that have come down with the coronavirus. I don't know what it might be. Maybe you don't have a large enough uh, uh, reserve fund. Maybe there's other things that are happening within your life that's really stressful and you bail. So this is looking back over the 30 year period between 1990 and 2019. During that period, there was just shy of 8,000 trading days, days that the exchanges were open. If you look at those days, now remember, out of somewhere close to 8,000 days, if you look over to the right, the fourth one, it says miss the 15 best single days. Just 15 days out of that whole period, 30 years, would have cost you to lose 34% of the annualized return during that 30 year period. Can you imagine 15 days equating to maybe you having to work longer, not being able to take care of your family, maybe not being able to leave a legacy for your children? That's quite intimidating. But had you sat in your seat, had you actually not jumped out, your total return for the U.S. stock market for that 30 years would have been 10%, just shy of it. How great is that, that you can get a, an annual, annualized rate of return of 10% over a 30-year period in spite of all the crises? And soon I'm going to show you a, a chart that's actually going to show you many of the crises you may have already forgotten about. Here it is. This is basically just some of the things that we as investors have experienced going back to 1970. As you can see, there were so many different things that had happened, including Black Monday, which happened in 1987, which was a 23 and a half percent drop of the S&P 500. The US stock market lost nearly a quarter of its value in one day. You wanna talk about strain and uh, stress on investors? That day was, but, but you know what? That year, we actually finished up positive. So, I'm not trying to tell you that markets aren't volatile. I won't tell you that things repriced, but what I will tell you is 
that you can see from this, and we have charts that go back past way longer than this, that there are always things that happen. There are always crises that we have to survive and thrive through. And the best thing to do is be a disciplined investor, to look beyond the concerns of today and take that long-term um, outlook in order to survive and thrive. It's not easy. It tests you. But I believe if you have a good advisor, if you have a solid investment plan, those things are attainable. I've been investing in this way myself personally since 2000. I took a personal loss because I owned a bond fund where the manager went off the, the prospectus and bought some very illiquid bonds. And in one night, I came home and my safe reserve capital went down by 44%. Can you imagine? I was a professional trader. Someone with expertise on trading uh, financial futures. And here I come home and my safe and secure money drops 44%. It was a, not a good feeling. But guess what? It took us seven years to get through that. I was the lead plaintiff and we survived and thrived. I still built my business. I still raised my two children we had. My wife was pregnant, by the way, during that period. And it was pretty harrowing, but we got through it. I got the right lawyers. I became lead plaintiff and we had great recovery. 